Hi, my name is Matt and welcome to my shop. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Triton routers to help you decide which one suits your shop best, or maybe you need both of them in your shop like I do. Routers are a very critical part of my furniture making process and these routers are definitely my favorites. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the TRA001, that's three and a quarter horsepower, and the MOF001, this one here is a little baby brother of the TRA. It is a two and a quarter horsepower router. So let's get into it. Trident's been making tools for over 45 years, and for the last 20 years or so, their flagship product has been their routers. If you're watching this to decide which of these two routers to go for, we'll first take a look at the differences. The TRA has won many awards since it was first released about 20 years ago in 2001, and it hasn't really changed a whole lot in that time. The smaller MOF has won an equal number of awards, and it shares all the same features as the TRA, but is lighter with a slightly smaller motor. The bigger TRA at three and a quarter horsepower has enough power for any routing task you can imagine. It can be used handheld and it's great for flattening slabs, but it's a big beast so it's really at home in a router table. I've had a TRA under my router table for six years and the same router has never come out. Now for the MOF. The MOF shares the TRA's features but is lighter and smaller, making it more suitable for handheld use. At two and a quarter horsepower, it is still powerful enough for all your everyday woodworking. One noticeable difference due to their difference in size is the greater plunge range on the TRA. So in short, if you want a router with heaps of power that can take on any woodworking task you can throw at it, the TRA is going to be for you. Mine gets constant use over in my router table. Now, if you're more looking for a good all around router, the MOF is going to be for you. It's very easy to use handheld, but still can work in a router table and still has plenty of power. Or maybe you're in a shop where you do a lot of both of these things, and then uh, maybe you need both of them. So those are the differences. If that's all you need to know to make your decision, that's awesome. Give the video a like and enjoy your new router. But now we're gonna go through the key features that make these routers loved by woodworkers worldwide. First off, these Trident routers come with a built-in router lift. The lifting mechanism is built directly into the plunge base, eliminating the need for an expensive aftermarket mechanism. Simply attach the router to the Trident router table or another compatible table insert the included through table micro winder stick and away you go. Or maybe up or down you go. And this lift mechanism isn't just for Triton router tables. Some third party tables are compatible and some insert plates are even specifically made for these routers. You can probably fit it to any router table. You may just have to drill a hole through for the height winder. Now here's the cool bit. In the table, cranking all the way up engages automatic spindle lock. So you can do above the table single wrench bit and collet changes. Now here's a couple quick notes about placing these routers into a table. You should remove the base plate and that'll give you some extra crank height above the table. You also must remove the plunge spring. That's going to remove resistance and make for a smoother use. You want to keep that spring safe and clean so it can be reinstalled for handheld use. The quick fit pins make installing and fixing the router into the Triton table an absolute breeze. This system is also how these routers fit all the other Triton router accessories. Triton routers are a dual mode plunge so in one mode, you have the standard plunge mechanism, but in another mode, you also have this nice rack and pinion plunge, which allows you to raise and lower the router by twisting the knob. Another great feature of that plunge mechanism is it has built-in detents. So if you're doing an operation where you need to make incremental passes like a mortise, you can step down in roughly quarter inch increments without taking your hand off the handle. The rack and pinion plunge underpins other key features of the Trident router, like the built-in lifting mechanism. The fine micro adjustment winder can be accessed here from above with this knob or from below with the micro winder. You can set the plunge depth with the spring loaded depth stop and the turret with two customizable depths. The easy to access height lock lever secures the router height in either rack and pinion or plunge mode. Triton routers also have unique safety features. There's an automatic spindle lock when changing calls and bits. It automatically engages when you wind the cutter all the way through the base. This won't engage unless the router is switched to off. There's an automatic lockout cover that slides over the on switch. When you're in bit change mode and the spindle lock is engaged, you can't undo the cover and turn the router on. Since we're talking about bit changes, Triton's interchangeable call it means that both routers accept all of Triton's six, eight, 12, quarter inch and half inch collets. In the US, the TRA and MOF are supplied with both quarter and half inch collets in the box. If you're not in the US, check the Triton website for your region to see what collets come in your box. Next, let's talk electronics. Slow start is included, 
so these routers won't jump out of your hands when you turn them on. They also feature variable speed from 8,000 to 21,000 RPM to allow you to adjust the speed of your cutter for the diameter of the cutter and the type of material that you're actually cutting. They also feature dynamic load control, which will automatically monitor the bit speed and adjust accordingly depending on varying routing conditions to maintain a consistent and constant bit speed. For safety and to help with dust extraction, Triton rudders have enclosed polycarbonate shields. You can see how the shielding system includes a channel that funnels dust directly into the dust extraction port. This greatly aids in the dust collection and makes these routers really clean to work with. Included in the box is the extended base plate. This base plate has a couple of main features. It allows for attaching the edge guide, which comes with the router. This edge guide also allows for the attachment of sacrificial fences. And the base plate can also function as a trammel or a circle guide by pivoting the base plate around a nail or a screw. The base plate can be easily attached or removed using the quick fit pins. Other accessories which are also available are the Triton guide bushing sets, which will also allow you to use bushings from other brands like Porter Cable. And the Triton TRTA001 router track adapter, which connects using the quick fit pins and connects your router to your Triton Makita or Festool track saw tracks. So which one do you need or do you need both? The TRA is going to be great for heavy duty routing tasks such as flattening slabs in a router sled or mounted in a router table and doing panel raising. It can literally take anything you can throw at it. The MOF is great all around throughout the shop. It's great in a table and it's also easy to handle when using handheld. Now I know I have both these routers in my shop, but if I had to choose just one, I would choose the MOF. The MOF is the one I'm going to be grabbing the most. I do a lot of handheld routing tasks and this is just a lot easier to handle than something this large and heavy. You can certainly do a lot of routing tasks that you could do with the MOF with this larger router, but it's going to be uh, bicep mode. <laughs> and uh, it's, this, this is a lot easier to just pick up and go versus this where I feel like I'm at the gym doing some uh, curls or, or something. So for me at least, the MOF is gonna be the router that I grab the most often. If I only had just the MOF, if I had some larger routing tasks, I would just reduce the amount of material being removed per pass. You do more passes, it just takes more time, but then you only have one router in your shop to really deal with and worry about. This thing is super versatile, super easy to maneuver, and I absolutely love the rack and pinion plunge mode that both these routers offer. So that's it for uh, which router to get. Hopefully that was useful. Let us know if you have any questions, and until next time, happy woodworking.